from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likens Show. Like the way you think. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likens. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likens Show. One of the terrible things about being on vacation is stuff happens. And you don't get to comment on it. One of the things that happened, <laughs> Brett Favre. Out of the playoffs. The New York Jets will not be in the playoffs. By the way, neither will the Green Bay Packers. And the way I see a Brett Favre room the season of two teams, not just one. I mean, uh, how much better would the Green Bay Packers have been if Brett Favre stayed retired and they didn't have that whole controversy during their training camp? It wasn't enough for, for him to go somewhere else. But he also had to ruin the season for the Green Bay Packers. And now uh, his own teammates are calling him selfish. His own teammates are calling him distant. A number of his Jets teammates, uh, both on and off the record, have had nothing good to say about Brett Var. Nothing. Now, we told you on this program, and we got a lot of flack for it from listeners who are just, you know, mindless football fans as opposed to thoughtful football fans. Uh, some of the mindless football fans out there called you, I can't believe you're saying that about Brett Favre, you know? Brett Favre's a tough, tough individual. He's a tough guy. He's a lot tougher than you. You try going in there. He's tough. But the guy balls like a baby. He, he cries. And not only that, he's a big drama queen. And so Brett Favre made this big stink, and he finally got himself traded to the New York Jets. And not only are the Jets not making the playoffs this year, but his teammates now are roasting him, ripping him. I mean, uh, these guys have played with the man. These guys have talked to the man. These guys have been in the clubhouse with the man. And the comments are just outrageous. I mean, the word selfish coming up over and oh, distant. One of the trainers they brought in, I guess they were going to train the New York Jets. They were going to use boxing as a means of training. Oh, Brett didn't want to participate. Brett didn't want to get in there with the other uh, with the other Jets. I mean, the guy just came in there, and it was much ado about nothing. And, of course, everybody in New York, they were all called, Yeah, Brett Favre, now he's with the Jets. You know what I'm talking about? We're going all the way. Yeah. All the way into the garbage can, folks. New York Jets went down in flames and Brett Favre was there lighting the torch. Your time is up. I mean, uh, do you remember we talked about Brett Favre and all those people were calling in yelling at me and beating on me because I said the guy, you know, the guy retired and unretired. Cried, cried when he retired, cried when he came back. Couldn't decide. Did he want to retire? Did he not want to retire? <laughs> Is he actually going to come back there next year? I don't think so. Now I think he's going to retire. Now you see, had he left well enough alone, okay? Had he retired at his zenith? Had he retired when people still loved him? Wouldn't that have been the right thing to do? Remember the Green Bay Packers offered, if you recall, they offered to pay him for the remainder of his contract. Just be our goodwill ambassador. We'll consult with you on, on, on player moves and we'll, we'll keep you involved in the team. We're not just sending you away. We will pay you and you can come to work. We give you an office. You come in. But no, that wasn't enough. He had to drag the sports world and you moronic sports fans. I'm a sports fan. I don't, I don't think sports fans are moronic per se, but the ones who defended Brett Favre and his drama queen ways, morons. Morons. Brett Favre then had to put up or shut up and he couldn't put up the points. He couldn't do it. All of that whining and crying and all that soap opera for nothing. Am I wrong? Tom like it. 1 800 5800 Tom. Tom like it. 1 800 5800 866. The Tom like it show.
problem so we can get another one. I'd like to thank the, the Packers for giving me an opportunity as well. I hope that every penny I hope that every penny that they've spent on me, they know it was money well spent. There we go. Brett Favre a year ago. <laughs> so Brett Favre made this big stink and went to the New York Jets. <laughs> he couldn't get him into the playoffs. Is he going to do this again this winter? Is he going to drag everybody through the mud? I don't know. I don't know if I want to retire. I'm going to think it over. I'm going to think it over. Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Father Tom. Son, how are you? Great topic, my friend. Thank you. Heard you talking about it. I've been a loyal Green Bay Packer fan since 96. And I'm going to admit it. I jumped on the wagon. I was a... I was uh, in my 20s then, and, uh, you know, Brett Favre was the man. He was the man back then, and I followed him. I followed him through good. I followed him through seasons where we were 4-12 and about four years ago. Uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, be able to go to Lambeau, uh, watch a football game against the Detroit Lions, seven-degree temperature in December. Froze my butt off. I'm a Cali boy, but I froze my butt off. But that's loyal. That's what loyal fans do. Now, I lost all respect for the guy when he cried. Okay? When and he, he not only cried, but he, he dragged out that I, drama. I know. And my football buddies were like, what's up with your boy crying? And I said, you know what? That's soft. So uh, that's, that's, that's the first step. Then, he, like you said, he drags us diehard Green Bay fans through the mud with all his little smirking on and off that stupid airplane that we chase him to go get, and he, he has the nerve to smirk at us while he's getting on and off this stupid plane with his ugly wife that ain't even hot. Maybe she was hot like 20 years ago, but that's besides the point. Well, my point is I was so glad to see him go to the Jets, and I'll tell you why. Because he kept doing exactly what he was doing on the Packers, was throwing interceptions. Yeah, he won a few games. Yeah, 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 whatever. But still, he didn't make the playoffs. He's not going to come back, and I hope he doesn't come back. In fact, I, he not only lost the playoffs for the Jets, yeah, he lost the playoffs cool. for the Packers. Exactly. Because and Aaron Rodgers Aaron Rodgers did not get to have a whole training camp without all that, that controversy, without all that distraction. And you know, you, know, you know the sad part? Brett Favre was, is a third-string uh, uh, pro bowler this year. Statistic-wise, he was horrible. If you really look at numbers, Aaron Rodgers had a better year than him. He had a horrible record, but he had better numbers than him. Right. And, you know, and, and for him to make, and it was kind of sad because uh, Philip Rivers from the Chargers, you know, got dogged out by Brett Favre. That's horrible. And Brett, uh, Philip Rivers had better numbers, and he's in the playoffs. Yeah, no doubt about it. So Brett Favre, he can he can go somewhere with it. Right, let's let's talk about Chad Pennington. Chad Penn, another good quarterback. He got he got kind of dogged yesterday, though. He didn't he didn't step up to the plate like, but he did beat the Jets, and that was nice. I enjoyed that. So that was that was nice. Father, can you take me out with a uh, bong rip uh, followed by a uh, screaming orgasm? Absolutely, Mark. Here you go. Oh, oh God! Oh, yes. Yes! Yes! one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. It's Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. I uh, just want to say that I definitely, definitely agree on this topic with you. I mean, Brett Favre, he just, he's just a crybaby, you know? That's right. Well, why, why Why? do you have to change to death when you have a setup at uh, Green Bay? What, what's, what's the deal with that? By the way, I mean, Chad Pennington. Chad Pennington made the playoffs. Exactly. That's my next point right there. The Jets, 
would have had an even better season with the chemistry which they had with Chad Pennington if he would have stayed. But no, this crybaby has to make a giant big deal, drag all the fans through the mud, like the previous caller said, for nothing. By because, the way, this is a one. typical thing that happens in New York. I don't know if you've paid attention to New York teams at all, but it's a typical thing that happens. you got a younger player who hasn't quite gotten there yet, but he's on the way up. And then you have a chance to get a thirty year a thirty eight year old washed up former star and they sign him for a year or two. And this isn't just football, it's every New York team. They all do it. They all Wayne Gretzky playing for the New York Rangers. They all do it. Yeah. And and the I fans agree. a lot then the fans act like Wayne Gretzky played his whole career in it. Yeah, Wayne Gretzky he was a rager. He was a rager. Yeah, but not in his best years. <laughs> he never won crap with the Rangers. I definitely agree. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean it's I, think, I just think it's ridiculous. I had a lot of respect for him when uh, when they lost in the uh, AFC Championship, but, you know, you know, they played a hard game, and then you should have retired right there. I think it would have been perfect. He would have left it like that. The fans would have loved him. He would have stayed in Green Bay, but no. It's, uh, you got to be a moron and ruin two seasons. Yeah, two different teams. Unbelievable. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? Doing great. So I've actually had a first-hand encounter of uh, Brett Favre being uh, selfish. So uh, I'm at a Packers conference uh, with my two kids, and I had the chance to speak with them face-to-face, -face, and uh, my kid has been wanting an autograph from him for a while. So I asked him for the autograph. Uh, he takes the paper over uh, happily, signs it, and then he starts peering down at my shirt pocket, which I had a, a picture of him uh, framed. And uh, he looks he looks at that, looks back at my eyes, and looks back at it again. And he's like, well, are you going to give me that card? And uh, I kind of chuckled, thinking he was laughing. And uh, he says, well, you think autographs are free? And uh, I, was, I was just baffled at this point. And uh, he, takes, he takes the autograph, rips it up, and he says, uh, you know what? Have some class next time you're speaking to a world-class quarterback. <laughs> and my kids start crying. Um, I, I don't know what to do. And, you know, just after that, I, I can't have respect for the guy who, who does that in front of my two kids. So, you know what? All, all you guys out there that uh, still have respect for him, I mean, psh, the, guy's, the guy's in that case. You can't do anything about that. Ryan, thank you for that. It's Phil on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, thanks for taking my call. Yes. Hey, one thing about when you were doing this about a year ago when he was going to come back and he was in tears, the reoccurring thing that you kept saying uh, that Brett Favre had said at his press, press conference was that it's not about the money, and you kept saying, well, sure, it's about the money. He it is. He's doing it for free. And, but, but, Tom, you never said anything about it when, he, when they offered him $20 million to stay home for two years. You never came back on and said after, after the fact, you know what, I guess it wasn't about the oh, money. What if, what, if, what if the Jets offered him uh, the NFL minimum to come play? Would he have gone? No, but they offered Why him not? 20, Tom, they offered him twenty million to stay home for what two years. What if they offered him the NFL minimum? I, Would he have taken it? The answer is no. You don't know that. They were offering him money to stay home, Tom, for twenty I'm million. I'm asking you. Oh, yeah. yeah, but what you know, he wanted to get paid to play and he wanted to get paid uh, in, in the lifestyle to which he'd become become accustomed. There's no way he'd take the minimum. Fair enough. Tom, can you blow me up please? Yes, yes I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom. Hey. I, I didn't lie to the Dino, but I didn't tell him the whole truth. Uh, I got this lesson from my dad. Um, a guy is allowed. To, and let me preface: I think by far the punk. What he did to the Jets. I'm not a Jets fan or a Packers fan. I'm unfortunately a Lions fan. But he got Mangino fired this year. But my dad's rule, and I totally believe it. A guy is allowed to cry three times in his life. Um, I've cried once when my dog died last year. Um, if your first dog, your best dog dies, you're allowed to cry. Once you're old enough and your daughter gets married, you're allowed to cry to that. And if you're going to end a professional pro career. Now, what, what comedian said that? Because you've borrowed that from somebody. I so just heard I, that Maybe on TV. my dad did, but I got that from my dad. My dad yeah, then your dad heard a comedian. I just heard that line on TV. But, I, I mean, I fully believe in it. I mean, there's no other reason to cry if you're a man. But, I mean, no, no. if you're going to end your little league career, you can't cry. But if you're going to end a... 20-year brilliant NFL yeah, career. Yeah, but guess what? Two years ago, he didn't end his career. I Last year, with, he yeah. didn't end his career. So, you know, if he cried when he ended his career, we could have a conversation about it. He cried, and then he came back. Little baby. True. Little baby. 
<laughs> and then, then the guy ruined. He ruined the seasons of two different teams. Oh, I totally agree. He's a punk. He's totally a pain. And he, and he got a, a creep. Good coach fired. You know, unbelievable. Blow me up, Tom. I'll blow you up. Press the button, nothing happened. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Brad Favre, no playoffs for him. <laughs> it was much ado about nothing. Joe on the Tom Likas Show. Father, how you doing? Okay, son. Good, good. I felt like I had to chime in here. You know, it's, it's sad when you watch a player who's as established as Brett Favre is and, you know, pretty much put himself through this whole entire mess. It's, it's, you kind of have to take out pity on the guy. And if you look back, it kind of reminds you of like, like Michael Jordan. You know, he hangs it up with the Bulls and then comes back with the Wizards? Really? You know, it, That's it, it, after it, he already had done a comeback with the Bulls. It just, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, you look at it, I mean, obviously these guys are playing for the love of the game, but, you know, it, you got to realize if you're a professional athlete and you're in the eye of the public and everything you do is under like, the lights of a camera, you got to know when to hang it up and you got to know when to make yourself not. I mean, I, 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 all these years I've never had any intention of retiring. The day I will retire will be the day nobody will pay me what I'm worth. That's it. I'll do this till I'm 85 years old. So, so that, so then you kind of agree with what Manny Manny Ramirez is kind of off topic a little bit, so if I digress, but it's kind of like what Manny Ramirez said: if no one offers me what I what I want, then I'm willing to retire. You kind of agree with that, even though he's. I don't. He's I don't like believe it. I don't believe it. What you don't believe he said that? I don't believe he'll do it. Uh, so, you, what do you think? You're a Dodger fan, are you not? I'm a Dodger fan, but uh, now the word is spreading that the Giants are supposedly talking to Manny Ramirez. Well, that'd be a sad day for Dodgers. But, um, all right, Dad, thanks for taking my call. Can you blow me up? Yes, son, I can. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Christian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Great. Yeah, I got two things for you. The first one is this. There's two types of Green Bay fans, if you've ever been to Green Bay, and that's there's the Green Bay Packer fans and there's Brett Favre fans. The Brett Favre fans say he can do no wrong. Green Bay Packer fans know his true colors and can't stand him. The other analogy I'll give you, comparison I'll give you is this. Brett Favre is the white version of Terrell Owens. You remember Terrell Owens crying, don't you? He's my quarterback. He's my quarterback. <laughs> Same thing. He's the white version of that. <laughs> drama, drama, drama. By the way, how's Terrell Owens doing in the playoffs? Exactly. How's Brett Favre doing, too? <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you take me out uh, African travel style? I certainly can. Baninge, 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 sopenza. Baninge, baninge. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Brian on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom. Hey. How's it going? Great. I I I disagree with you saying that Brett Favre made two seasons bad. He did. Yeah, you you got to look at the Dolphins are doing better with Chad Pennington now. I'm not talking about the Dolphins. I'm talking about the Green Bay Packers and the New York Jets. <laughs> All right. He ruined the seasons of both teams. Yeah, but Chad Pennington made the Dolphins better. Chad Pennington did make the Dolphins better. The Dolphins stunk. Yes, he did. Chad Pennington made the Dolphins better. But Brett Favre, number one, didn't give Aaron Rodgers the benefit of having a full training camp without controversy and without uncertainty. And then he went to the Jets at the last minute. And when he got there, didn't know the playbook, wasn't ready to play. And then uh, once the season got started, uh, he wasn't all he was cracked up to be. Yeah, but Aaron Rodgers knows the playbook, and he's been for, with Green Bay for a while, so I think that... Uh, yeah, but I, he is still, I mean, he's still a relatively young guy, and for him to have to have gone through all of what they went through during that training camp, and you can't tell me that was fair to him. It's not fair, but, you know, as the season goes on, you get better with your accuracy and everything else. I don't know. I don't buy. You know what? I don't buy it. I think that uh, uh, once a I think Aaron Rodgers is a hell of a quarterback, and I think once he gets an entire season, including an entire training camp, without Brett Favre and his little whiny ways, uh, I think they will be back in the playoffs. Uh, I agree with you. You know, Favre's crying a little crybaby, but you know he he deserves what he got. 
Thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Brett Favre not going to the playoffs, not playing in the NFL playoffs with the New York Jets. What do you think about that? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. So Brett Favre, all that whining and crying, was it worth it? New York Jets are not going to the playoffs this year. Is he going to drag everybody through some more soap opera? The New York Jets owners want him to come back next year. Twenty eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jose on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom. Hey. How's it going? Hey, I, I'm calling because I disagree with you on the whole thing that Brett Favre ran two seasons, two team seasons. How so? Because if Aaron, you're saying that Aaron Rodgers didn't have a full like training camp without the whole thing of Brett Favre hanging over, his right? Head. But Aaron Rodgers should have been able to step up during the season at least. If you look over at Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning didn't have a training session. Freaking like a uh, how? How are the uh, Indianapolis Colts doing in the playoffs? They just got, but did they make it to the playoffs? Well, that's true. But, so that means that Aaron Rodgers could have stepped up and taken his team to at least the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, but Peyton Man- but wait a minute. Peyton Manning did not have this controversy during training camp. Yeah, but he had the whole thing with it. He had a physical ailment that prevented him from practicing. Uh, Aaron uh, Rodgers had this thing in the preseason. He should have been able to get over it, stepped up to the plate, and taken his team to the playoffs. They had a good team over there. They just came out and choked. That's all the Packers, the Packers did. They just choked as a team. So do you think that the Patriots choked as a team? Do you think the Cowboys choked as a team? Do you think the Dolphins choked as a team? The Cowboys choked as a team. The Patriots did not choke as a team because they were 11-5, and five, better than the Cardinals who got into the playoffs, better than the Chargers who stepped it up at the end of the season but still got to the playoffs. It was a whole situation. I'm a Dolphins fan, so I'm glad the Patriots didn't get into the playoffs because the Dolphins went there. And I do think Chad Pennington made the team better, but he didn't take as many reps as as Brett Favre did. We relied more on, like, the Wildcat scheme or the whole, like, shindig there that helped us get to the playoffs, helped us win games. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. I just don't think that he ruined two seasons because how many games did the Jets win last year? Uh, they won less last year than this year, I believe. I have to take a look at the record, but I do believe they had won less, but still not that many less. But they were in the hunt, and I think Mangini should have benched Favre. Look what Andy Reid did for one game, and Donovan McNabb came back and was the old and nobody. Donovan nobody has the guts to bench Brett Favre. Uh, not no, not Eric Mangini. No. Uh, no, not uh, here. We go back in time. Mike Holmgren. Nobody would have had the guts to bench Brett Favre. But they they ended up leaving where they were because of Brett Favre. Mangini's gone now. I don't think Brett Favre should come back. I think he was over the hump to come back in the first place. Yep, I, I that part I agree with, Jose. Thank you. It's Lee on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Lee. Long, long time no talk to, buddy. Boy, last boy. time I the last time I talked to you is when that crazy. Uh, dog case was going on that inherited the four million dollars and my friend was involved oh boy long time ago anyway let me just tell you something i'm going to try to really watch my language because i hate that no good self-grandizing narcissistic son of a you know what he he he, you know he he could have quit like you said at the top of the line but he just wanted to be the. he always has to be the prima donna the the center of attention and what does he end up doing because he has to throw one more interception he screws my patriot it's out of a spot. I hate him. I want him to be castrated. I want him to go through the New York transit system so we can take care of him. He is the biggest piece of crap. 
I just want to see him on the subway once, Bob. Uh, one time. <laughs> just once. He does, you don't have to worry about him being bitch because he won't have an ass to sit in a bitch. <laughs> he is the biggest piece of crap. I've listened to one terrible story about him after another. But, oh, boo hoo hoo, he had even me falling for it. Oh, I really, oh, I gave everything I could. But no, he had $25 million, like you said, he could have got. So it's not about the money. You're wrong, Tom. He would have settled for nothing to sign on because he's got. The, the Jets big, were stupid big, to pay him all that money. Oh, no. He would have gone for nothing because he's got to be the big savior. But what has he got to do? I swear to God, Tom, before he threw that last interception, I said to my friend, I turned to my friend, I said, this bastard's going to throw another interception. Boom, before the words came out of my mouth. Boom, he had to do it, just like he did it last year. He is just no By good. the way, did he have? did he have a press conference after that? Oh, no, no, he didn't. Not in New York. They would have rode him out on a rail. And he did, and I can't stand Mangini, but he still, he got the raw end of that deal. You know what I mean? And he came in there, and the first few games he was okay, even though I didn't like him. He was okay, but he just had to keep showboating, and it cost my damn team, 11-5 team, a spot. And the damn Dolphins, the only good thing about it is those damn fish went down. That's the only good thing that happened this year, Tom. I've got to live with that. I mean, I'm telling you, man, I just want him. I'll pay for the ticket. Just come down into the subway, Brett. We got something for you. I guarantee you, he, him and the D, D or whatever. His it sounds to me thing. like you're ready to get out of the subway yourself. Oh, let me tell you, I'm in California now, but obviously I'm a New Yorker. And I will pay for the fare just Two to ride. Two minutes and 36 so seconds. I can meet him at the damn subway, Tom. He's a piece of crap. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. One eight hundred. At least she waited two minutes and thirty six seconds. One eight hundred to say she was a New Yorker. Yes, like you couldn't tell. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hi here to John on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. Third time, long time. Thank you, sir. Uh, just to reiterate what that windbag from New York just said, technically, Favre didn't only screw the, pa uh, the, the Packers and the Jets, he screwed the Patriots out of the playoffs as well with that terrible performance in Week 17. Well, that's uh, exactly what the last caller said. but I know. <laughs> but uh, just uh, real quick, man, Jeannie, he's so overweight, he looks like Kevin James from the King of Queens. <laughs> he's to lose a couple pounds. And if I have to see any more Brett Favre Wrangler jeans commercials, I'm going to lose it. Between him and Peyton Manning. All those guys do are make TV commercials. It's unbelievable. 1-800-5800-TOM. <laughs> it's Tony on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. First Tony. time caller, long time listener. Yeah, baby. Um, I'm going to have to add to another soft story like that other New Yorker. Or sounded like he was a New Yorker. Um, the Jets knew. The Jets knew they were going to get a, a, a quarterback who was going to add to his interception record. I mean, I mean, Beth Favre is a good player for 38, 39. I don't know how old he is. He's a good quarterback. He was brought into the Jets running, uh, football team organization to number one, uh, win games, and number two, possibly take them to the playoffs. He did one, but he didn't do two. And um, I'm sure that if Beth Favre would have you know, won the last game and maybe won the first round of the playoffs, we probably wouldn't be talking about this. But, um, and, you know, I think, I mean, I I'm personally, I'm a 49er fan, and I hated the Packers, you know, because they would always beat us in the NFC uh, championship games and stuff like that. Um, but um, I think Brett Favre is, is a good quarterback, even though a bunch of drama well, but he's not. He's not, but he's not that good. No, 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 no. That's why I said he's a good quarterback. I never said... He was great. You know, he's not a Joe Yeah, Montana. but the point is, when you're getting $22 million or whatever he gets per year, I, I think you have to be great. Yeah, you know. Good isn't right. good enough. Yeah. Hey, Tom, can you take me out, uh, Lacey Peterson style? It would be tasteless, but I could, yes. Amber. Hey. Amber. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's our telephone number. Brett Favre not going to the playoffs. What do you think about that? Let's say hello here to Matt on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Great. Great. I think that last call is a lady from uh, in Los Angeles from uh, New York. I think she is so full of it. I feel that Brett Favre came back trying to help a team he felt he could still play. He was unwanted by his team that he was on for 
over a decade, and he still felt he could win. And he started off the he season. He was wrong. The, he was wrong. I, he was having one of the best seasons of his life until he just fell off the wagon. I well, think I, 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 yeah, the season is not nine games long. Sorry. Yeah, but I feel like if I agree with your point that if he was to get benched for one game, then he would have. You want to have a se- you want to have a seniors league like like professional golf? Fine, but 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 it's not a nine game season. It's a yeah. sixteen game season, and you have to be there for all sixteen games. There's no falling he, off the wagon. Not acceptable. You never- you never know how a second half of the season is going to be. He felt like he was able to you do You do when other- somebody's really great, okay? Yeah, I'll tell you what, Tom Brady, you knew how the second half of his season was going to be a year ago, and he wasn't hurt. You knew. You yeah. knew. You knew. Hmm. Brett Favre's well, an old man, and he should have retired, and he didn't. And he dragged everybody through this whole the, the drama queen thing uh, that uh, I think was unbecoming, and frankly, it uh, tarnishes his image. I feel that it... It might have tarnished his image, but I feel like the fact that he wanted to continue to play, that's who Brett Favre is. Uh, no, no. He, he, wanted, he didn't want to continue, then he did, then he didn't, then he did, then he didn't want to continue with the Packers. <laughs> Come on. I put yourself He's a little part. girl. He's a little girl. Uh, man, like I said, I love talking to you, man. I heard about you from my older brother. You're an awesome guy. I love your work. Well, thank you for that. That's what they always say when I have them against the wall. Oh, you know what? You're great. I love your show. You're so great. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Anthony on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's happening? Not much. Hey, I just had an opinion on this, uh, you know, Brett Favre. I agree with you on that. You know, he's a drama queen. You need to drag it out. Either say you're going to retire or not. But uh, I said, in opinion, Packers or Jets, you just have to have a, a great to decent offensive line anywhere between there. You can run the ball, and with that, you can throw the ball. If you can protect the quarterback, you know, you can do anything. But people playing the Jets, you know, even though Leon Washington and Thomas Jones, they were good, they knew, hey, they're going to sling the ball at least 30 times with Brett Favre, so they're going to, you know, do whatever they got to do to get to him, make him uh, make quick decisions. He'll throw an interception here or there, whatever he's got to do, you know, whatever he thinks is right, he'll end up throwing the interception. But uh, basically, if you have a good offensive line, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is, you're going to win. And it all starts with the offensive line. That was my only opinion. And uh, thanks for your time. Goodbye. Thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. All that drama Brett Favre took fans through a year ago, two years ago, was it worth it? Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. A Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Now heard six days a week. Here are Saturdays from 2 until 6 on 97.1 FM Talk in Los Angeles. And at blowmeuptop.com. Click the Listen Live button. And you'll be listening live. It's Monday through Friday from 3 until 8 on 97.1 FM Talk. Saturdays 2 until 6. And then on Sunday from 5 until 7, the Tasting Room with Tom Likas. And also at blowingup.com. So it's all there for you. All you have to do is, you know, dip right in. It'd be like a human tortilla chip. I'll be your salsa. There you go. It's 1 800 5800 Tom. Brett Favre, not in the playoffs. What do you think about that? It's Adam on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, how are you doing, Tom? Pretty good. Oh, I figured this would happen. What? I've been a Packer friend uh, pretty much my whole life, and we've been watching him throw interceptions, give away big games. I'm just glad I didn't have to watch it for my team this year. Do you agree that uh, he ruined the seasons of the Jets and the Packers? Um, I, I agree he ruined it for the Jets, but not the Packers. You Aaron, think Rodgers, that... Aaron Rodgers played a good season. Yeah, but how much better would he have been if he didn't have all that stuff in his head at the beginning of the season? Um, I don't think we could tell till next year. Right, exactly. But I'm, I'm, you know, again, we're just guessing. We're just speculating. We're just expressing opinions. And I happen to believe that uh, if Aaron Rodgers uh, one year ago today was told, all right, next season you're the quarterback, and that was it, I think he'd be in the playoffs today. Yeah, as long as uh, the defense can stay healthy. As long as the defense can stay healthy. Well, there you go. Michael on the Tom Likas show. Hello. 
Hey, Kyle, how you doing? Hi, Michael. Uh, I was just calling in regards uh, to Brett Favre. I mean, uh, what's up, bro? Why do you hate him so much, man? Why are you calling him? It's not a matter of hating him. It's when it's done, get out. When you're done, get out. Out. Stop with the crying and the press conferences. Stop with the but I'm retiring, the I'm unretiring. Before. Stop with it already. But he's never cried before. I mean, how could he, how, why would he be crying? You tell me. Boo hoo hoo, crier. <laughs> you tell me why he's a crier. Oh, well, first of all, because he's a big baby. That is a big goddamn baby. That's why he's a crier. Well, I mean, before, before he went to the Jets, let's be realistic. What happened? He was he was kicked out by Ted Thompson. No, no, That's he was that. kicked he was kicked out after he retired. No, he retired. He announced his retirement. Yeah, but Ted Thompson never wanted never wanted him. He announced his retirement. All he had to do was not announce his retirement. He had a contract, <laughs> and he would have been back. But that's not what he did. He had a big blubbering press conference, and he announced his retirement. Yeah, okay, granted, but... He didn't have to do that, but he did it. Well, well, why did he do it? Because... You tell me. (laughs) You know what? I'll tell you what. You sign a contract. You sign a contract. Be a man and come in and fulfill it. He had a contract. I have a contract to be here. I don't come and give a big blubbering press conference. And I don't don't know if I can go on. I don't know. I think I'm going to step down. And then come back and have another press. I I miss it. I want to come back. Come on. You have a contract. You be a man. You step up to the plate. You come to work. A while ago, you said he was not a good quarterback. He's a hell of a quarterback. No, no, he is. He, you know, he's he's past his prime. He's done. I don't think so. I, 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 he was yeah, well, I will wear. How are they doing in the? How how are the Jets doing? How are the Jets doing in the playoffs? Well, obviously they're not in the playoffs. Well, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Chad Pennington made the playoffs. He's an overrated quarterback. He got lucky. Oh, he got lucky, and Brett Favre got unlucky. Oh, you're so full of it. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Matt of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Mr. Likas, what's going on? Not Uh, much. I I get in this argument almost every weekend with my friends. I think Favre is the most overrated quarterback in NFL history, and I'll say that. I, I, You know, he's he's the all-time leader in interceptions, and they gave him... Two opportunities to come back to the team. They asked him once, and he said no. Then they asked him twice, and then he moved on. And if he knew he was going to the Jets, he would have shut up and stayed with Green Bay because he didn't want to go to New York. He doesn't want that big spotlight. And the the other thing that bothers me is when other quarterbacks make a bad read or a bad throw, oh, that's a stupid play. But when Favre does it, oh, he's a gunslinger. He's so daring. Oh, that's just how Brett Favre does it. You know, so that that just – I just can't stand that. Yeah. So. This is a great topic. Finally, someone puts it out there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to um, Don on the Tom Like His Show. Hey, Tom, how you doing tonight? Doing okay. Hey, uh, there's, there's two trains of thought as far as I'm concerned. He has every right to play. I, if someone's going to pay him, he has a right to play. But on the other hand, he, he's, he's a Hall of Fame quarterback. It's better to leave too early than too late and tarnish that. Uh, reputation as far as I'm concerned. I think he should have stepped down this year. He shouldn't have played anymore. Yes, well, uh, that, that's the whole thing. I mean, again, you know, uh, be a man, a step up to the plate. I mean, I'm telling you, I've got a contract, and I believe in fulfilling your contract. I believe you come in, you go to work. I mean, imagine if I had a big press conference last year. Oh, no, if I can continue. I don't know if I can go on. No. You come yeah, in, you, gotta, you work. It's better to retire too early. And Brett that, Favre uh, had a contract. You know what? You re- Here's when you retire, when the contract is up. Right, of course. Of, of course, you, you give it your all, and you don't whine about it. But, you know, he, he, should have, he shouldn't even have played this year. I thought he was done last year. I mean, but, I've said, of course, if someone's going to pay all that money, I'm going to take it. And no matter how bad I am, I'm going to take it. That's right. But, by the way, why did you? Why, if you're Brett Favre, why did you sign a contract that goes through 2008? If your plan wasn't to play through 2008, well, yeah, you never. You ne- I don't know what his thinking was, but hey, Tom, can you take me out with that Kobe Bryant style? Yes, yes, I can. Oh, oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 
Yeah, it beats in my heart. Yeah, the air I breathe. She's so special to me. I don't know if I can go on. I think I'm going to stop right here. <laughs> I've taken a beating all these phone calls over the years. I can't take it. I'm going to have a press conference. <laughs> Stupid. You come to work. That's what you do. Brett Favre. I don't know what I'm going to do. Shut up. Be a man. You signed a contract. Come to work. Stop having press conferences. Stop crying. Jesus. Jared on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What up, Tom? Not much. Long time, first time. Long time, list up, first hey, time, brother, cool. Uh, I think it was a bad move for the Jets in the long run, man. Uh, <laughs> you bring in a new quarterback, especially after you've got Kellen Clemens. You know, I'm from Oregon, so I watched Clemens play with the Ducks. He was a good quarterback, and I think if you try and build a team around that guy, you've got a better chance because you've been practicing with him for one or two years, whereas you bring in Brett Favre, you've got high expectations from the fans. Everybody wants something out of him immediately, and that'll go to his head too quick. You know what I mean? I do. And, uh, you know, I just think, it, you know, when he was in uh, Green Bay, Brett Favre was the hero. He's the man, you know what I mean? And everybody loved him there. And when he came to New York, he really didn't know what to think because everybody had such high expectations. And he pretty much thought to himself maybe he had to build a new name. You know what I mean? Well, uh, he did have to build a new name because, uh, you know, why you get to New York and, uh, you know, uh, the minute you make a mistake, they're booing you mercilessly. Well, of course. And, you know, I'm a Bills fan. I think of it like Doug Flutie. He did great in Buffalo because people loved him in Buffalo. And when he went to San Diego, his numbers showed that he just could not produce like he was with the Bills. You know what I mean? Those things happen. All right, Tom. You take it and uh, take me out with a bomb rip and a thank you, Jesus. Here you go, Jared. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Very quickly, Roger on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, Hi. I agree with you a hundred percent. I grew up thirty miles south of Green Bay, and I've been a Packer fan all my life. And thank God I didn't have to listen to Brett's whining and his drama. I mean, when he, I, I never did listen to the whole. Um, spiel on his retirement because I couldn't stand listening to him cry. I mean, you talk about a whiner. And he hasn't just done it last year. He put the whole team in a turmoil the last four years. It's horrible. The Tom Likas Show.